The skeleton and the fight in Jason the Argonauts was uh, quite a, uh, an ambitious thing to bite off because I had never animated multiple figures before. And we wanted to have seven skeletons fighting three men. We had seven stuntmen, each portraying one of the skeletons and the actors would rehearse with the stuntmen. So that would give them the chance to count their moves and see just where they had to stop their, their movements in order to give the impression that they were fighting with a skeleton. I had to take about four and a half months on that particular sequence, which only lasted five minutes. It took four and a half months in the front of the animation camera to animate seven skeletons because at, at many times I would only average 13 frames a day. The combination of live action and animation goes way back to the silent days. We use models, of course, unlike uh, Roger Rabbit and some of the other cartoons you see today, we use a dimensional model, which blends much more closely with the live action than a flat drawing, such as you saw in Mary Poppins. And of course, Willis O'Brien and the Lost World combined live action with the animation. And King Kong was the, uh, really his uh, highlight of the combination. I wa wandered into Grumman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood Boulevard uh, some years ago in 1933 when I was a uh, tender age of 13 and I haven't been the same since. I was just um, uh, found that this picture haunted me so that I had to find out how it was done. And when I found out about the uh, glories of stop motion animation why uh, I started to experiment in my garage, and after that, it gradually developed from a hobby into a profession. I had the great pleasure of working with George Powell for a while before the war. He was doing a series of puppetoons at the time, but they were very stylized figures, and they were not the same type of drama that I was really interested in. After the war, I uh, made my own series of puppet films. I made a series of five films. I called them Mother Goose Stories. I funded the films myself. Uh, they were very easy to make because I didn't pay myself a salary. It was sort of a one-man job. My family helped me out very much. My father became interested in it. My mother dressed the figures. So uh, it was more or less a family enterprise. The plaster heads were all extreme expressions. They, uh, I, I made one placid expression and then carved, maybe t made 10 casts from it and carved each one slightly different into extreme expressions. And then I d would dissolve in eight frames from one head to the other. The flowers smelled so sweet, sweeter than peppermint candy. Then Red Riding Hood heard a gruff voice say, yes, they certainly are beautiful flowers. She turned and saw the big greedy wolf of the forest standing on top of a rock. Red Riding Hood had never seen a wolf before, so she was not afraid. Of course, in Red Riding Hood, the, uh, the wolf was uh, very dear to my heart because it was the type of thing I wanted to do later on. Uh, when I got involved with dinosaurs and prehistoric animals, of course, they're all creatures of fantasy. And I found them much more enjoyable to work with than uh, just a normal character. And we 
we found that melodrama was very useful for the medium of dimensional animation. And uh, of course, it had always been used with dinosaurs. Willis O'Brien, my mentor, he used uh, the dinosaur and the gorilla animation. Well, after King Kong, of course, he was my hero. And I called him up at MGM one time. He was very courteous and very encouraging. And uh, we became friends. And later on, when he got involved with Mighty Joe Young, he chose me as his uh, assistant. Again, a gorilla, a nice, kind gorilla, very sympathetic. And uh, it didn't have the same impact, of course, that King Kong had. So Charles Schneer and myself came to England originally uh, to make two films. And we've been here ever since. This was way back in 1960. Uh, after Seventh Voyage, we had, uh, the studio had uh, uh, an old script called Mysterious Island. I took the shell of the crab and made a mechanism that would go inside specifically for animation. Then you can make the crab do exactly what you want him to do. We wanted to do some close-ups of all the intricate uh, mechanisms in the mouth. So we got uh, six live edible crabs. And when we put them under the lights, of course, they got very languid. And they all fell asleep, I think. Although, how do you know when a crab is asleep? And that evening, we ate our actors. I think Hitchcock would have been pleased. <laughs> the music is very important. I, I've always felt that... Uh, 50% of the success of a fantasy film is the music. The music heightens the emotion. It makes the whole thing bigger than life. You see, Medusa is quite a complicated uh, uh, figure. She has 12 snakes in her hair, and each snake has to be animated. by using a pencil eraser and each frame of film you move them slightly until you get them into the position you want and inside her lips she has little levers that give her a chance to have some sort of mobile features <laughs> These type of pictures are not a director's picture. They're, they're, they have to be laid out uh, ahead of time in a very careful way so that they can be made for a, a reasonable cost. Uh, the picture is laid out many times before the director is even brought onto the scene. Uh, he has to handle the actors naturally, and, uh, but the, the actual film is laid out by Charles Schneer and myself and the writer. I'm retired from making films because uh, it does take too much of your life. Uh, we spent three years on Clash of the Titans, and uh, the, there's a long time in preparation. There's a long time in, in um, after the, everybody goes home and they go on other pictures, the rest of the crew will maybe do two pictures while I'm still putting the, the first one together. But I'm in hopes that one day there will be a, a viable museum that will house all this material because it actually is the bridge between Willis O'Brien's work and uh, the work of today. I've uh, had a great uh, success and uh, practically, I would say, 90% of everything I wanted to do, I did. 
I'm told the stars of my films were uh, my creatures because uh, most of them received the best write-ups. <laughs>